Well, Prince Harry served with the British Army in Afghanistan and he's deeply involved in the welfare of all veterans, as we saw at the Invictus Games. And a few years ago, he made a special visit to meet Associate Professor Munjed al Madiris at the Macquarie University Hospital in Sydney, where injured war veterans and many other people have come to have robotic limb surgery. Munjed has been changing lives right across the world and his memoir is called Going Back and we are lucky enough to have this extraordinary man on our panel right now. Nice Yay! to see you. Um, now, you have actually brought with you an amazing piece of technology. What is this exactly? Can you hold it up for everyone to see? Uh, basically, this is um, a robotic leg that's attached to a titanium, highly tensile strength titanium implant that is implantable in, into the human body. So this is the calf? Wow. That's this is the knee and the calf. And that's the, thigh. the knee joint. And that goes and the into the thigh. That actually be inserted into, into the, the bone or the stump of the... Wow. Pretty much. And um, then you, we re change the architecture of the muscles and nerves to operate this myoelectric prosthesis. So, so this the is person's own muscles and nerves make that work? Yeah. Oh, wow. God. It's the human mind that operates this kind oh of Oh, my device. God. So the that nerve signals everything. from the brain make the leg move. And the and arm. it's a robot. And the, basically. And is that... Oh, my God. How long will this last? Uh, well, technically speaking, there are parts that need to be changed every few years, and but the implantable part should last for more than 10 years, maybe 20. Wow. What would this sort of, um, what would this sort of, uh, um, I guess, m m machinery cost when it comes to fitting it to a patient? Uh, it depends. I mean, it, it, we, we're very lucky that we're living in Australia where the health system is very well funded. Mm. Yeah. So pretty much majority of that is um, rebatable. Um, but what are we talking the, in terms of cost? What would that sort like of... International patients, when they come to have it done, and we treat a lot of uh, British soldiers and American soldiers right in the vicinity of 100 plus thousand. Wow. wow. Australian dollars. What incredible. did Prince Harry say to you during the visit when he saw this? Well, picture? the first time I met him, I, I received him from the car and then we got into the lift and then it came to him and he said, oh, so you're the man? And I said, well, apparently you're the man that I'm the same. <laughs> that was the start of the conversation. And actually, I gave him my card and he looked at me and he said, you're the first person that gave me his business card. Really? <laughs> yeah. Prince Harry's never been given a business card before. Well, that's what he said anyway. I'm going to you know. slip him one next time I see him. And no. a card. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and to <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Now, you, oh, you, <laughs> you came to Australia from Iraq and you were invited back. Why did you decide to go back knowing all the risks? Oh, look, I mean, um, uh, uh, I never thought about going back to Iraq considering the violence and what's been going on. However, um, um, I received a phone call from the Iraqi Prime Minister and he said, well, we need you back. There are a lot of victims that uh, have suffered from the war and... Um, um, and that was the green line for me to be able to go and help. And, and it's very important that we build back the bridges with, the, mm -hmm. with that region. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, there has been a lot of destruction in the region, all around the world, basically. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's the duty of all of us to, uh, to mend the gap, especially you can see the examples of what's been happening now. Um, oh, can I, can I say, it is just so... Like, I feel like I know, because I've seen you work in, all over the place, but it is just amazing at this time to see what human beings are capable of, mm. and yourself in particular. What, what sort of security did you need in Iraq? It must have been... I mean, you are a high-value asset, if I may say so. Well, I left Iraq as a fugitive, and I escaped from Iraq because there was um, a gun pointing uh, yep. to my head. And, oh, my um, uh, but that time has changed, and... And now when we went back, I mean, they treated us very well. And um, um, every time we go, I've been there six times, I'm going the seventh time in Easter, um, the security level decreased. And now we are staying outside the green zone. So, right. um, um, and we spend the New Year's Eve watching the fireworks uh, outside. So Iraq is not as dangerous as it used to be. And, and things are normalizing now. And, um, and you can see some hope and uh, definitely the future is there, especially if uh, sectarian violence ends. Yeah. When we see something like this, it's almost miracles can happen. That is just extraordinary technology. And when you say it's operated by our own brains and our own muscles and nerves, mm. 
What's next? What, what's the future hold? Well, what we're developing now with the upper limb uh, amputees, we're developing sensory uh, pads on, on fingertips. So um, not just the power is um, moved from the brain to operate my electric arms, but now we're getting sensory feedback um, into the, uh, the, uh, the brain. Um, so a person can hold an egg without squashing it wow. and can feel the pressure. Mm. But that's, that's um, um, a process in due course. And, uh, um, hopefully, uh, we will have implantable electrodes rather than just service electrodes. And uh, I'm developing this uh, project with Macquarie University uh, um, um, engineering team. You're an amazing wow. man with great. quite the story to tell. You can read his memoir. It's called Going Back. Uh, Monjad, you are fantastic and just what we needed on the panel after um, the horrors of the weekend, that's You're for sure. You're very kind. Thank well you. done. Thank Put you very much.